Today we're speaking with Dr. Janet Rowley, the Blum Reese Distinguished Service Professor in the Departments of Medicine, Molecular Genetics and Cell Biology, and Human Genetics at the University of Chicago. Dr. Rowley is the recipient of the 7th Annual AACR Lifetime Achievement Award. Thank you for joining us, Dr. Rowley. I'm delighted to be here. Congratulations on receiving this incredible award. What does the achievement mean to you? The achievement uh, is, is partly to me, and, and I think in large part to uh, cytogeneticists around the world. And I'm delighted as a representative of this group of, if you will, unsung heroes to, uh, to be uh, the representative, but also for the recognition of this. I think that uh, we were amongst the first to emphasize the role of genetics in cancer uh, and uh, were important in uh, highlighting the importance of genes. In 1972, you discovered the first two recurring chromosome translocations, one of which re resulted in the Philadelphia chromosome. What was it like to make this discovery? Well, it was a, a really uh, oh wow moment. Uh, but I think it's important to realize that I did this while I was working part-time. And I actually made the discovery of the Philadelphia chromosome translocation on my dining room table because I work from photographs. And uh, the photographs were at home and spread out and the one place I could spread them out was on the dining room table. When you made this discovery, did you have any idea about the incredible significance it would have to the field? No, I, it, because at that point uh, we knew the location uh, on chromosomes of only a very few genes. So it really took the uh, co-opting, if you will, of the talents of molecular geneticists and others who could clone the breakpoints and see what was actually there because at the time of the discovery, uh, we didn't know whether the breakpoints were the same in different patients or whether they, were, they uh, involved the same region. Uh, so it was just a phenomenon without any explanation. And you were also the first to map the location of the myeloid lymphoid leukemia gene, and your studies of chromosome abnormalities in leukemia and lymphoma have provided critical scientific insights that have led to cures for previously untreatable cancers. In your opinion, what was your most significant accomplishment to date? Well, that's a very hard question to answer uh, succinctly because, uh, as I alluded to before, I think once it, uh, the chromosome translocations were discovered and the people with skills uh, cloned the genes, then one could begin to see what those genes were in normal cells, what their function was in normal cells, and then how was that function altered in abnormal cells. Uh, and when you look at the number of papers about translocations at the present time and the variety of people involved in it, it's had an enormous impact on both uh, basic science as well as uh, treatment of patients. As someone so accomplished, what advice do you have for young investigators? I think it's important to realize that I was almost 50 when I discovered translocations. So the first piece of advice is uh, we're not like mathematicians uh, who are over the hill at 25 or 30. Uh, you have to just take a long view and be patient if things don't go right early on, uh, but be persevering. And the second is that I think that uh, a young person would do well to have an older advisor as a mentor for a while to uh, learn, the, if you will, the tricks of the trade or to uh, see ways of, of um, maintaining one's own independence at the same time uh, understand how science and research 
is, is, is most effectively carried out. Thank you so much for joining us. Well, thank you for uh, the opportunity to uh, participate.